All right, everyone. So I've had a bunch of people ask how I ferment my feed for my chickens and my turkeys and my ducks and my geese. Yeah, I think that's everybody that gets fur. Oh, and the guinea fowl, they all get fermented feed. I ferment year round. Um, I mix it in with the goose food and it's really easy. It can sound intimidating. A lot of people are intimidated by it. I was kind of intimidated by the process at first, but once we got into it, it is so easy. I've been fermenting for several years now and I've never, I don't think I've once had to throw out a batch because it went bad. Um, so you just follow a few, few specific rules. Make sure that, that your vessels are clean, whatever buckets or containers you're using to ferment in are clean, and you follow the schedule as far as how long to ferment, and you stir them, everything's gonna be fine and you're gonna end up with a good ferment, okay? Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get a vessel like a bucket or some kind of container that's at least twice the size of the amount of fermented feed you want to make. Okay, and I've got right here a five gallon bucket right here of corn. I've already filled up about halfway with the corn that I'm gonna make for the day. Okay, now this is food for three days from today. I'm making food for three days from today. And one thing I wanna point out is if you look at this feed, it is not very processed. It is a, a minimally processed food. Okay, you can actually see right in the food, there's parts of corn and there's some, some oats and wheat berries and some uh, some sunflower seeds. Don't I would not recommend trying to do this with a super processed food like a Purina flock raiser or something like that. This is just a general all flock that I get from my Amish feed store. It is minimally processed and that's important. The stuff that's super processed just doesn't tend to ferment well for me. I tried it and it just turned into mush and it wasn't good. Um, instead, I'll show you what, uh, I'll show you a little further down the line in the video what the finished ferment looks like. Um, but anyway, you're gonna put your food in the vessel, about fill it a little less than halfway, and then all you gotta do is cover it with water. You're gonna mix in some water and make sure there's at least two to three inches of water on top of that feed. Now. For the entire, this is the important, this is an important part to keep your food from molding, okay? For the entire duration of the ferment, you need to maintain a level of water above the feed. And what'll happen is that feed can, will swell up as it absorbs water and it'll start poking up out of the water and that's when you're at risk for mold. You can't really put too much water in there. The worst that's gonna happen is you're just gonna have a lot of extra water left over. And if you have waterfowl like ducks or geese, you can use that in their food and they'll love it. Um, it'll be full of probiotics and good bacteria and things like that. But anyway, um, so the more water is better, especially as you're first getting started and you're first figuring it out. If you end up at the end of your ferment with six inches of water on top, it's better than having the feed not covered in water because when it's not covered in water, air gets to it and then mold can grow. Okay, so that's important. The other thing is to make sure that you clean your buckets in between. Um, I just hose them out really good and then like every second or third time, I actually take a brush and I rub around and make sure that there's nothing left and I'm starting with a really clean one. But most of the time, especially in the winter months all I do is uh, I just rinse it out with the hose in the summer I'm gonna use a little rubber scrubber or a sponge or something to just wipe around the inside really quick um, you don't have to sterilize it you just want to make sure it's clean um, but anyway so we've got this bucket here feed and I'm just gonna fill it up and you'll see how much I fill it Now this water, because I put so much feed in there, this water is going to sink down. It's got a long way to go to sink down, so I am filling it a little fuller than it will be when it's done. Once I stir this around, that water level will drop some. And I just use a little, I've got a little wooden stick that I stirred around with to get the water all the way down in there. You got to try to keep your turkeys away from it because they'll try to eat it before you can even get it fermented. But we'll just stir it around there. The other thing you want to make sure you do, go ahead and point it down here, is you want to make sure at the end when you're all done, you take and you hose down the sides, okay, so that you don't have any food inside the bucket on the sides exposed to the air because that will mold. So you want to make sure the sides are clean. So that's it. Just rinse the sides down real quick, okay? Just rinse the sides down real quick uh, when you're done. And then the only other thing you're going to do, 
Now this here, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing air bubbles come up still. Um, so I feel like better safe than sorry. I'm gonna add a little more water just to make sure that, you know, as that feed swells up, it will, it'll stand up out of the water. I wanna make sure that doesn't happen. And that's why you want a bucket or a vessel of some kind that is at least twice the size of whatever volume of feed you're gonna make. Um, so you have plenty of room for water. Then I'm gonna take this lid and loosely put it on top of here. Holiday, you're not helping. I'm gonna put this lid loosely on top. You don't wanna put it tight because as it ferments, it's gonna put off gas and the gas needs to escape. So just loosely put it on there and then I'll just take it over here. I'm gonna set it right here. And then the only thing I have to do with that feed is stir it twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Couple of things to note. If it gets much below 65 degrees or so, I don't know the exact number, but around 65 degrees or so outside, your ferment is gonna slow. It'll still ferment, it'll take a lot longer. You might need four days. When you start getting down into the 40 degree weather, that's when your ferment isn't gonna do a whole lot. And you'll either need to put it in a, in a heated barn or put some kind of like a uh, plant seed mat under it, or you can just keep it in your house and bring it out depending on how much feed you're, you're taking around. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so when it, gets, when it gets really cold, your ferment's gonna slow. When it gets down, you know, in the 50s and 40s even, your ferment might stop. You might not get a lot of ferment. On the other side, if it's really hot out and the weather is 80, 90, 95, 100 degrees every single day, you might only need to ferment for two days. When it's super hot out, like here in August, we only ferment for two days, but most of the year we ferment for three days. So what I wanted to point out here is if you're gonna do a three day ferment, you're gonna have three buckets of feed going at a time. And when you start doing your ferment, you're gonna do just one bucket. And then the second day, you're going to set up a second bucket. And then on the third day, you're going to set up the third bucket. And after three days, you can use the first bucket again, and you just cycle it through like that. And then once you've got it going, just every day, you start a new bucket to replace the one that you used. Now, I'll show you real quick what it looks like. Come on over here, Kyle. Kyle is my cameraman. He's off camera. This is, you see there's all these bubbles here. This is feed that has been fermented for two days. I've already fed today's food, so this is only on two days. This will go until tomorrow. I'll feed this tomorrow morning. You can see the bubbles there a little bit. And if I stir it, you see the bubbles coming up? All those bubbles coming up. Okay, that is an active ferment. And you will start to see that depending on the temperature. If it's 85, 90 degrees out, you will see this starting as early as the, the, the next day. 24 hours, but don't freak out if you don't see it right away. Sometimes it takes until the second or even third day, depending on the temperature, to ferment. But you see all of these bubbles coming up here, and tomorrow, provided the weather stays a little warmer, it's about 65 degrees out today, provided the water stays a little warmer, it will, uh, it will be much more active than even that. So the next thing I'm gonna show y'all, look right here, Kyle, this is a custom lid that I made. I just took a bucket lid and I drilled a bunch of holes in here. Um, I don't remember the size of the holes. You just kind of got to play with it and figure out what works for you. Um, but what I do is this helps me drain the ferment in the morning. And I'll demonstrate, even though this ferment is not ready to go quite yet, I've also drilled a couple of vent holes in the top too because this will fill up. So you want some vent holes that are a little smaller in the top. Um, but even though I'm not using this ferment until tomorrow, I'll show you what I do with it and what you end up with. Okay? I just put that on tight like that and I use another bucket. And I just let it sit here. Excuse <coughs> me. I'll just let it sit there and maybe I'll take my, my stirring stick and put it under there to make it like that. And I'll just let it drain for about five minutes while I go about doing some other chores on the sanctuary. Okay? And we don't need to let this drain all the way. This is just for demonstration purposes. But you end up with this sour, which is excellent. You can use, you can actually use this sour if it's colder out. One of the tricks I do. Um, if we're getting into the 50s and 60s, um, I will actually use a small amount of this sour to jumpstart my next ferment. So instead of just putting regular water in there, I'll put mostly water and then I'll put, I don't know, like a quart or so of this in there and it will jumpstart your next ferment. Um, but let me show you what your fermented feed looks like when it's done. And this, this looks about the same as it will look tom uh, tomorrow. You can see that it has expanded, it's swelled up. And so because it is swelled up, and it's, uh, it's got all that moisture, it's much softer, it's gonna be easier for your birds to digest. They're not gonna need to drink as much water because they'll be getting a lot of their water through their feed, um, and you will have much fewer issues with 
sour crop or impacted crop. As a matter of fact, since I started fermenting my feed, I have had zero cases of sour or impacted crop that was not related to a secondary issue. In other words, if I did have sour crop or an impacted crop, it was a secondary symptom of a, a more underlying issue that the bird was already having. Um, but I have not had any issues of just a plain old sour or impacted crop where the bird was otherwise healthy. And that's because this food is pre-softened and it breaks down very easily in their crop and, and the nutrients are more available to the bird. And this food is packed full of healthy probiotics that help them keep uh, good digestive health. So I'd highly recommend fermenting the feed. But anyway, this is what the feed looks like after two days. It'll look about the same on day three. Uh, but we do like to give it a full three days, especially when it's colder out, uh, to get that full ferment. And then, as you see here, there's nothing sterile in here. So a lot of people will get real hung up thinking that everything's got to be sterile, and it doesn't. All you're going to see me do here is, like I mentioned before, I'm just going to take a little extra water, and I'm going to rinse down the sides of this bucket to make sure there's no food exposed to the air. That's really all I have to do. And so now this food is ready to go for tomorrow. And I can actually use my strainer lid as a lid. The only reason the lid is on here is to keep mice out of it um, or keep the chickens from falling in it or anything like that. Um, so that is how I ferment the feed. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm real active in my comments. I'll answer any questions. If you want any other how-to videos, I'd be happy to make them for you. Um, but uh, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching my video.